is up, everybody? Thank you for coming by and joining me for another one of my opening tea podcasts. This is the first of my three podcast series, where they're all short form, hopefully somewhere in the 20 to 25 minute range for this one, and maybe a bit shorter for the other two. And what I've done is I've broken it into three segments that I think are the most important for information this week. And so, of course, that you guys don't have to listen to me for an hour straight. I can't even listen to myself for an hour straight, so I highly doubt you guys want to. I might say that uh, quite a bit on these, or at least once in it. I just like to, to make that mention if there's anybody new that's joining us this week. So uh, this week, uh, our show is sponsored by Superdraft. If you haven't gotten to try Superdraft, it's the future of daily fantasy sports has arrived. Experience Superdraft's exclusive game mode multiplier. Say goodbye to salary restrictions and hello to lineup freedom. Use your fantasy knowledge to draft any player you want and build your very own dream team. Countless lineup possibilities let you experience daily fantasy sports the way you want. Superdraft offers contests for PGA, NASCAR, and MMA right now. Hopefully we're going to get NBA back questionable about MLB, but regardless, you can enjoy the best of DFS all year round. Sign up for Superdraft uh, today using promo code AWESOME12, and it's $10 free on your first t- deposit of $10 or more, and $20 total free on your first deposit of $100 or more. So download in the App Store or play at superdraft.io. All right, so uh, now that, uh, and of course, if you haven't played their multiplier uh, mode, it's really cool. And I'm not going to lie, Brian Harmon this week scored like 160 points and didn't even do that well and was one of, one of the top scorers. But uh, that's the fun uh, of it for sure. Okay, so for some of facts from last week, this is how I always start off this podcast. Just some quick facts that I picked up on uh, that I want to share with everybody. And it seemed to be a bounce back week. We had big time names coming off of missed cuts like DJ, John Rom, Sergio Garcia, and then maybe some some not so big names, but still guys that came back and played well. Dylan Fratelli, Ryan Palmer, Harris English, all coming off of missed cuts and having a great week. But none better than Webb Simpson, who just putted his way around the course, gaining almost seven strokes with the flat stick for the week and racked up another win. And he is just flying up the official World Golf ranking list. Pretty incredible here. Also uh, pretty incredible, but obviously not to the tune of Webb Simpson, is in Abe Hanser. As he just continues to show impressive number on these old layouts, these peep die tracks, ones that require accurate driving of the golf ball and a good approach game, one where driving distance does not come into play all that much, answer is just showing he can really compete with the best of them. Speaking of competing with the best of them, Dan Berger and Ty Hatton got to be some of the hottest players in the world right now, picking up right where they left off. Uh, after, after their two-month hiatus, Hatton, another tie for third here. Berger as well, a week after his win, just continues his super impressive form, and let's see how long that can go. Speaking of uh, good form, Joaquin Neiman carried over a really good Sunday from the Charles Schwab right into the RBC Heritage, came in third, and just looked fantastic guy like Bubba Watson this week, a 65 today, and although we finished at minus 8, tournament still comes to a course off of some good mojo and a course that he's won at twice in the last five years, so something to keep an eye on. Okay, my high and low for the week, my biggest low really was Hideki Matsuyama. Um, he was my, my biggest low. I had some good plays like Victor Hoblin, Abe Anser, J.D. Poston, Brooks Kepka. And I did end up coming in the sixth place for the Millionaire Maker. And I say that kind of kind of grim-wise because uh, if you do follow my Twitter, at DFSGolfer23, uh, I tweeted earlier in the week how you play the Millionaire Maker to win it. We don't care about the payoff structure. Well, man, did I eat my words badly this week. As I came in sixth, I beat 133,000-plus lineups, and I got paid $8,500, which is still a, a very nice... Uh, payout. It was still a good and profitable week, uh, but still, nonetheless, certainly a little hurtful to uh, to beat that many lineups in a twenty dollar buy in and get paid out that little. But hey, that's we play to win the game, so no more complaining on this front from me. Um, still, some good plays. Victor Hovland, like I said, it was a great time to buy on Brooks Kepka, a really good time to buy on Dustin Johnson, and we will see what they do with salaries this week. For the travelers. But before we go on to the travelers, let's go into the not your average missed uh, cut sweat segment. 
Always a tongue twister for me. First, we're gonna start off with the good, and it was all the stars, Shoffle, Rory, JT, Rom. They all needed something better than 67 to make the cut on Friday, and they all got it, but probably none better than Xander, who needed to birdie two of the last four, got one of them, then lightning struck. He had a 17-footer, missed it, and came to nine, and had to wait out about an hour after the, the rain delay came and was able to make a nine-footer to make the cut. Still didn't do much. He woke up to a four over 75 the next day and a 66 on Sunday in just under two and a half hours. So interesting for Shelfley there. Now going to the negative side, Ricky Fowler, after missing four from inside 10 feet while putting cross-handed, which blows my mind. Ricky has been one of the best putters on tour for countless years. And all of a sudden he went to cross-handed and he missed four inside of 10 feet. So he came to 17 needing to go birdie birdie to make the cut. He ended up birdieing 17, but missed his 25, 30 footer on 18 for his second straight miss cut. Now moving on to some other guys that if they could have learned how to putt and match the field in it, they would have made the cut. See who Kim lost five and shot even par. Michael Gillick lost four and a half strokes, shot even. Sung JM missed a cut due to his putting, lost 4.4 strokes, shot plus one. Aaron Wise, what a surprise, lost four, shot even. Cameron Smith lost three and shot minus one. So maybe he's coming around a little bit as normally he's a real good putter. Speaking of coming around and real good putter, Jim Furyk lost two and a half and shot minus two. Jazz Jenna Watanant, who I really thought was going to make this cut, lost two and shot minus two. So the reason he didn't make it was his putter. And last two guys, maybe a surprise here on one of them. J.J. Spawn, maybe not a surprise. He lost 1.6 and shot minus three. But the second one, Aaron Badley, got it to minus three. Actually, was playing with Doc Redman and had it much better than that. He was at minus five at one point in the round. He lost 1.6 strokes putting and ended up missing the cut. So, a uh, tough break for Aaron Badley there. On the other side, guys that could only do with what they're putting and was putting hot. Adam Long, he gained four and shot minus two, missed the cut. Patton Gazeer shot minus three and gained four. Putnam. Shot even and gained three. Boy, he's out of out of sync right now. And Pat Rogers gained 2.4 and shot minus three to miss the cut. All right, that'll do it for the missed the cut or made the cut sweat segment. Uh, and now we move on to a little statistical review where we like to see what stats were important last week and if there was some crossover between the new age and the old age. The new age being strokes gained and the old age being some boring ones like driving accuracy and distance. All right, so for strokes gained off the tee, Brooks Kapka. He put one from on the ninth hole to three feet on Sunday. That zooted him, jolted him, probably not zooted him, jolted him up the leaderboard uh, and up the strokes gained off the tee board as well. Coming in first, Dustin Johnson second, Eric Van Ruyen third, Matt Wallace fourth. There's Bryson again, fifth, Abraham Answer sixth, Vic Hovland seventh, John Rahm eighth, Max Homa ninth, Corey Connors and Justin Rose coming in tenth. So now we go to the old age stats and we look at driving accuracy. And I can tell you before reading these names that only one of the top 10 in driving accuracy was found in the top 10 in strokes gained off the tee. And that was Abraham Answer. Some of the other guys, Jim Herman, C.T. Pan, Chesson Hadley, Matt Fitzpatrick, Tyler Duncan, Andrew Langley, Jason Duffner, Rory Sabatini, and Doc Redman. Okay, when we move over to driving distance, we've got a bunch of guys that come up. Eric Van Ruyen and JT were 1-2. They actually didn't show up on strokes gained off the tee, uh, top 10, which I'm surprised about. Probably had something to do with Justin Thomas. Uh, Justin Thomas's hole today where he basically hit it about 120 yards into the left trees. I want to say it was 15. Probably lost him a stroke or two just on that one hole. Outside of that, Brooks Kepka, he was third, and he was number one in uh, strokes gained off the tee. Uh, Dustin Johnson was also up there. Bryson Shambo was also up there. Victor Hovland and Matt Wallace. So almost half of the guys in driving distance were found in strokes gain off the tee this week, showing some pretty good correlation uh, for the week there. When we turn our attention to strokes gained on the approach, this is a direct correlation to greens and regulation, as well as Abraham Answer led both categories, as his irons are absolute fire right now. Also with uh, absolute fire in their irons, Sergio Garcia's ball striking was very impressive all week. He was number two in strokes gain on the approach. Doc Redman was third. Joaquin Neiman fourth. Max Homa fifth. Matthew Neesmith sixth. Bryson DeChambeau seventh. Webb Simpson eighth. And Bryce Garnett ninth. 
when we turn over to greens and regulation, we see Anter, Garnett, DeChambeau, and Neiman. So four for four right off the bat. Then we skip Connors and Kepka, who didn't have great on the uh, approaches, but still greens and regulation was good. Uh, then we get another one with Neesmith, and then Simpson also comes in the top 10 as well. So a big time crossover this week between strokes gained on the approach and greens and regulation. No surprise there as these greens were some of the smallest on the PGA Tour. So obviously if you're hitting the green, you're probably going to be closest to the hole uh, or closer to the hole, and that's where you gain strokes on the approach. So good to see that go hand in hand and have that pay off. Okay, uh, strokes gained putting on the week. Uh, we always like to look at who was hot the putter and who was not, but we'll start with who was hot. Ty Hatton, number one, Webb Simpson, number two, Matt Fitzpatrick, number three, Alex Noren, four, Berger, five, JT Poston, six, Mark Hubbard, seven, Carlos Ortiz, eight, Christian Benzenhut, nine, and Harry Higgs comes in at number 10. We switch over to putts per GIR, which normally we're going to see a big crossover, but doesn't look like too much this week, although Ian Poulter was not uh, one. It means his stroke scan around the green was likely very good. Uh, uh, Alex Noren is, Webb Simpson was, Ty Hatton was, Benson Hoot was, Fitzpatrick was, Poston was, and Brooks Kepka was actually number 12, finished in 10th in putts per GAR. So some good crossover, no surprise there. All right, so now our last stat and our last review of last week. That was too many lasts in a row. I apologize. Um, we have, we're about 14 minutes in. No, sorry, about 11 minutes in. So good on the review portion like to spend a little bit more time on this. So, top birdie review, Sergio Garcia comes in at 27. Webb Simpson, 26. This is birdie or better, by the way. So, Garcia, 27. Simpson, 26. Poulter, 24. And then you got three at 23 with Answer, Hatton, and Benson Hoot. And then at 22, you've got five or six names. Dan Berger, Joaquin Neiman, Brooks Kepka, Dylan Fritelli, JT Poston, and Alex Noren. So that does it for the RBC Heritage. It was a great week, very low scoring. In fact, Webb Simpson at minus 22 set the scoring record, as did Abraham Answer shooting minus 21. In fact, Ty Hatton and Dan Berger tied it at minus 20. Just shows you how good the scoring really was this week and how good the competition was. A tremendous amount of fun, and I suspect when we turn our attention to the Travelers, we are going to get something very similar. So, this is the Travelers Championship. It is played at TPC River Highlands. In terms of DFS, it is, I'm recording this on Sunday night, and all we know so far is the Millionaire Maker is back yet again from DraftKings. $20 to buy in. It is a $2.5 million prize pool, so up $250,000 from the previous week. TPC River Highlands is the course, as I just mentioned. We get four par threes here, measuring 223, 202, 158, and 171. Nice little islandish green on that last one, 171. 12 par fours, 434 and 341 to start. 341 is close to drivable. Maybe there's a little stuff in the way, but I suspect Bryson DeChambeau will be giving it a, a go this week. Followed by 431, 481 with the longest on the course. 443, 406, 462. Uh, 511, I don't know if that meant to be 411, I apologize, I didn't think I saw any par 4s over 400 yard, uh, over 500 yards. Okay, last couple, 421 and then the drivable 296, Bryson might even be hitting iron into it, who knows. Uh, 420 uh, and 444 on 18 to finish. So two possible drivable ones, definitely 16 is very, dri I'm sorry, 15, very drivable. Uh, and plenty of eagles there to be seen. The two par fives measure 574 and 523 for the week. That all adds up to just about 6,900 yards and a par 70. Uh, if uh, it, this this course is in Connecticut, so I apologize, I forgot to mention that. The Travelers, just outside of the insurance capital of the world, Hartford, Connecticut. It's hosted in Cromwell. Just about 45 minutes to an hour from where I grew up in Rhode Island. Uh, it's a great little metropolitan hub that they've got here in Cromwell with you know, Boston only being about an hour and a half, New York City being about two hours. They normally draw quite a crowd. One of the best and most well-attended events of the year. Obviously not going to be the same this year. But it is set in the Connecticut Forest. It's, it's on the uh, Connecticut River. A pretty big, pretty big uh, body of water that runs through and flows out into the uh, ocean. But it is not near the ocean by any stretch. It's more of a foresty course. Uh, Target-oriented Peter Dye. He's going to come and get you in certain places. Uh, 
So uh, uh, overall, a really good course. Driving accuracy, it's actually 42nd out of 49, one of the easiest in terms of accuracy, hitting almost 70% the field, hitting almost 70% of the fairway. So if you're good hitting your irons from the fairway, definitely uh, can see an advantage here. Uh, driving distance, not too many places to bomb it, but still ranked 10th uh, on tour last year. So again, bombers won't have their full arsenal to be able to use this week. In terms of greens and regulation, obviously, since the fairways are super easy to hit and a lot of balls will be coming from there, no surprise to see that it ranks 27th in greens and regulation, somewhere at about 58%. I think I have that right. Uh, it might be a little higher than that, but I'll check as we move on. Once you're on the greens, no surprise with the numbers being a little easier uh, on the other side. So they are actually, it is actually in the top 15 hardest greens out there. Again, like I said, no surprise because you need some protection. At 6,900 yards, you certainly need more protection on the greens if uh, you're not gonna if you're gonna allow players to hit drivers sometimes, which certainly they do, and the fairways being so easy to hit. So, um, no surprise there. So, okay, we're back. Here it is uh, on the greens in regulation. I'm sorry, it was 67 percent. I was right in uh, 27. So 67.23 um, percent. So I saw that 58 number and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't seem right. Okay, moving on, uh, the field, uh, quickly run through that. So it's back to a normal field this week. Uh, thank goodness on that front, it's not a um, it's not a, a weird kind of setup like it was last week. It's just simple, winner of the U.S. Open and PGA, then winner of the Players' Championship, winner of the Masters, winner of the Open, winner of WGCs, winner of the Arnold Palmer. Then, a little weird maybe, career money list as Luke Donald, Steve Stricker, and Bo Van Pelt are using that exemption to get in this week. In terms of sponsor exemptions, we got five of them, as this tournament is known to give the uh, young stars an opportunity. So we'll start off with the young stars, Satith Thagala, uh, the uh, Ben Hogan Award winner, I, I believe. Phenomenal talent. Um, keep an eye on him. Uh, Peter Quest also, and William Gordon, who we've seen a couple of times. The other sponsor exemptions that are getting a bid this week, Stuart Sink, Hunter Mahan, and J.J. Henry as well as life members, Davis Love and BJ Singh. The other couple of weird ones, uh, top 125 non-member, Matt Fitzpatrick, Doc Redman, Matt Wallace, and Lucas Beauregard are getting in that way this week. And then we've got a bunch of uh, top 125 medicals that are going to need to make some moves. Brunson, Burgoon, Kevin Chappell, Charles Schwartzel, James Hahn, Jamie Lovemark, Grayson Murray, Hudson Swafford, Wes Bryan, his second week in a row, Sung You'll Know, and Greg Chalmers playing out of that category. That leads off with just two left leader uh, from the Corn Ferry Tour points from last year, Scotty Scheffler, obviously, and then filled out the remainder of the 156-person field with uh, the Corn Ferry Tour from the prior season and two Monday qualifier entries. So uh, still two spots to be left open tomorrow. I suspect, though, um, we will know pretty early who that is. Pretty good field setting up for that week. So we'll move on to our stats that are important for this week. And if you want more info on this, check out my first cut article. Totally free each and every week on AutoSmo.com. It is live now. And you'll see that from the winners, from the previous winners, it it really was a blend of talent uh, that allowed them to win each time. There was two outliers. Jordan Spieth lost strokes off the tee in 2017 in his win there's absolutely zero surprise there and Bubba Watson actually lost strokes on the approach in his win way back in 2015 but other than that on in terms of ball striking each winner gained at least 1.8 strokes ball striking so a ball striker's paradise at 6900 um, especially you know when you see Paul Casey up there coming in second twice to Bubba Watson uh, you can see that it's a ball striker's paradise in the second shot course with only 6900 yards you know, it's not like Bubba's, uh, Bubba or Bryson DeChambeau or Brooks Kepka or anybody for that matter is going to be able to hit every drive 400 yards. So approach proximity from 125 to 150 this week. Some of the par fours are shorter than what we got at RBC Heritage. So the approach proximities have moved up 25 yards. All right, let's end it here with my top six salary guesses for the Millionaire Maker Contest or for DraftKings, I guess, for that matter. Last week we saw... Six golfers get above 10,000, and I was five for six, but actually throwing in Morikawa, I said 9,700. He was the number six guy, so almost a six for six guessing. Uh, my prices were a little bit off. 
Uh, this week, I've got them. I don't think they're going to go away from Rory McIlroy at, at the highest price guy. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt they're going to go ahead and put Bryson DeChambeau there or Justin Thomas. Maybe Justin Thomas since he's got back-to-back top 10s and a ton of points. Still, I've got Rory at 11, 11.2. I've got JT at 11,000 this week. And I've got Bryson DeChambeau, who again just picks up another top 10. I've got him at 10.9. Rom, who had a decent bounce back week, I got him at 10.6. And I've got Dan Berger coming in at 10K. I, I don't know how they're going to get away from it this week. They're going to almost have to put him there. And then you got Webb Simpson as well. So I might, I think that they might even go Webb Simpson at 10.2K and then Daniel Berger at 10K, throwing in Rose and Kepka below those two. I believe that'll give us the top eight prices of the week, maybe a couple of more than I used to do. So we have had a fantastic two weeks of golf. I'm so thankful that it is back and I get to talk about it. I appreciate all of you guys for listening. And of course, if there's anything you would like to hear more of on this show or more of uh, or any type of the content that I do, please feel free to reach out to me in either our Osmo Slack channel, if you're an Osmo Plus member, or of course, find me on Twitter at DFSGolfer23. So until next time, everybody, uh, I believe I'm filling in for the uh, show on Monday tomorrow for our first look and betting show. So if I don't hear from you guys then, uh, come and catch me at that show. I believe it'll be at 3 o'clock on Monday. So until then, everybody, we'll see you on the other side. Cheers.